Hello, I'm Michael Numnum. I'm a physician at Sarah Cannon Research Institute here in Nashville, and I am a GYN oncologist. So I specialize primarily in cancers of the ovary, cancers of the uterus, cancers of the cervix, specifically cancers of the female genital tract. Today I'm, today I'm here to talk about cervical health, specifically cervical cancer. Uh, what is it? How can it be prevented? How can it be treated before it becomes a cervical cancer? And, and what are the options in, uh, once, you're, once you're diagnosed with cervical cancer? It is a pretty rare cancer in the U.S. There are about 12,000 a year uh, and about uh, 4,000 deaths from cervical cancer, which in reality is about 4,000 too many. And uh, the reason I say that is because it is largely preventable with screening tests and uh, treatments to, to treat cervical precancers, which I'll talk a little bit about, talk a little bit more about in a second. Cervical cancer is again largely preventable with the use of the Pap smear, which has has uh, dramatically decreased the rates of cervical cancer over the past 50 years. As far as when to start screening with Pap smears, uh, there's been a lot of controversy recently, a lot of debate on when exactly is the right time to start. Should it be uh, at the initiation of sexual uh, activity as a teenager or whenever, or at the age of 21? The most recent recommendations, which I agree with, state that that you should start pap smear screening at the age of 21. Clearly the screening with the pap smear is the, most, is the most effective means to prevent cervical cancer and its precursors such as cervical dysplasia. However, there are a few things you need to be aware of as far as what to report to your doctor if you, if you uh, experience these things. Uh, the main one is abnormal vaginal bleeding. Any abnormal discharge, and, and a lot of these things are not caused by cancer, but certainly they need to be evaluated. Um, those are the big ones as far as uh, what to report to your doctor uh, other than obviously the annual screening with your with with pap smears a, a lot of women have questions about these new hpv vaccines or what's are the human papillomas virus vaccine i think the important thing to remember is that the 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 vi the, the the vaccine is most effective in women who have never been exposed to the hpv virus as far as the appropriate age to start vaccination with the HPV vaccine, most experts agree that ages 11 to 12 is the right time to start. I think one of the things that's really important to me and important to, uh, to doctors that do what I do that specialize in cervix cancer are to, is, is outreach, is to get out to the community and put out the message to all areas that this is a preventable uh, cancer, that we can, with the pap smear, uh, prevent this type of cancer. When, when you see a physician who has expertise in cervical cancer, one of the first things they do is a full pelvic exam, and that determines your initial stage of cancer. Uh, for those who don't know, cancers are stage one, two, three, and four in general. Uh, stage one cancers are, in general, the best cancers to have if you're going to have one, unfortunately. Um, they are largely curable in, in most cancers, and, and in cervix cancer especially. Once the cancer has spread uh, beyond the cervix, it becomes a stage two. Uh, three or four, and those are generally less curable. If you are considered to have stage one cervical cancer, then most patients who are medically fit to undergo surgery usually require a radical hysterectomy. And again, as far as the options in regards to what type of, of radical hysterectomy you need, I would definitely ask about uh, less invasive approaches, uh, laparoscopy, robotics. In, in women who or who have uh, cervical cancer that is spread beyond the cervix, so it would be a stage two or stage three or stage four cancer. Uh, radiation is the primary method of treatment. Uh, radiation with chemotherapy, sometimes just radiation, depending on the patient's medical condition. But I think once, um, once it is spread beyond the cervix, that is the best chance at a cure. I think it's extremely important when you first meet with your oncologist that you ask about the availability of clinical trials. These days, they're available in the community. They're available in a lot of places, and uh, they should be available for you with, with cervical cancer or with any cancer for that matter. Once, when it's in its pre-malignant or pre-cancerous stage, there are multiple options, such as laser treatments, uh, the, the LEAP procedure, which some of you may have heard of, um, and also sometimes observation or just watching it with close follow-up with your gynecologist is the best bet. If you would like to get more information about cervical cancer, I would start with the, the resources portion at, at minipearl.org.